Cyprus is one of the few countries in the world where geology stands out as the determining factor in both the shaping of its natural environment and its historical, cultural and socio-economic development both in antiquity and in modern times. For the inhabitants of Cyprus, as well as for visitors to the island, it's difficult to imagine that the genesis of the island was the result of a series of complex geologic processes and that the rich with flora snow-covered peak of Trodos was shaped by underwater volcanic activity on the floor of a vast and ancient ocean some 3,000 meters below sea level approximately 90 million years ago. Indisputable proof of this underwater volcanic activity is the bed of the Marulena River near the village of Kalohorio Kliru. Nineteen million years ago, this area formed part of the floor of the Tethys Sea, a body of water which extended between Eurasia and Africa. The various rock formations we see on the banks of the river and which constitute a pole of attraction for earth scientists the world over are quite simply lava flows which spewed forth from the bottom of the Tethys Sea at a depth of more than three kilometers. In order for one to comprehend the manner in which these rocks were formed as well as that of the Trodos Massif in general, one should be aware of the structure of the earth and the fundamental processes and rearrangements occurring in its crust for billions of years now. The crust is the outer shell of the Earth, and it's either continental or oceanic. Beneath the crust is the mantle, which is in a semi-plastic state. Beneath the mantle, and all the way to the center of the Earth, is the core. This is separated into the outer core, which is in a fluid state, and the inner core, which is solid. The crust and part of the mantle constitute the lithosphere. According to the theory of plate tectonics, the surface of the Earth is divided into a small number of rigid lithospheric plates which are in constant motion, thereby creating what is known as continental drift. Scientists consider the movement of the tectonic plates as the result of the constant and circular movement of the plastic material contained within the mantle, resulting in the plates either moving parallel to one another, away from each other, or even colliding with one another. Nineteen million years ago, and as a result of two plates, the Eurasian and African moving away from each other, lava began flowing out from the depths of the earth, pouring onto, amassing, and solidifying on the floor of the Tethys Sea. The first stages of the creation of Trodos and Cyprus itself were being recorded. Of these veritable rivers of lava, which so many millions of years ago flowed out onto the seabed, all that remains today are these flow-like rock formations. These are nothing but solidified lava, which, while still fluid, was brought up from the depths of the earth through these channels. The same area also lends itself to observing these solidified lava formations which, given their shape, are known as pillow lavas. Lava formations are found in many other areas on the foothills of the Trodos Mountains, with these forming a geographical ring extending across an area of approximately 600 square kilometers. Petra Turomniu, the place where Greek mythology has Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and fertility, rising from the foam of the waves. That very Petra Turomniu, which in geological terms consists of crystallized limestone, 200 million years ago was part of a coral reef on the northern edges of the African plate. It's here, in the area just south of Petra Turomiu, that geologists place the collision of the African plate with the Eurasian. The African was subducted by the Eurasian, a process begun 70 million years ago, initiating the rise of Trodos and its emergence from the sea, just like another Aphrodite.
The rise of Troodos and Cyprus continues to this day, further accelerating during the last two million years, with the entire island finally emerging from the sea in the last half a million years. Proof of this emergence is plenty, as for example at the Kakaristra Gorge near Nicosia, which two million years ago was the mouth of a river. Also, the familiar to all of us Cape Greco, with the terraced strata of what was once a coral reef representing the various coastlines formed through the ages by the recurring action of the waves of the sea. The emergence of Troodos had a profound effect on the geography of Cyprus. Its rise above sea level and the erosion that followed resulted in the lower rock strata now being found at its highest peaks. Geologically speaking, when one ascends Troodos today, one is essentially descending from the seabed into the depths of the earth and rock formations which once formed part of its upper mantle. The uniqueness of Troodos lies in the fact that normally taking a sample of the earth's upper mantle requires drilling to a depth of six kilometers under the seafloor something which is unfeasible. On Troodos, however, this is quite feasible, given that these very rock formations are on the surface. Given its global uniqueness, Troodos constitutes a pearl of attraction for many foreign universities which visit it for purposes of scientific research and training. Hundreds of doctoral theses have been written on Troodos, Thousands more scientific projects have been carried out and a number of scientific conferences have been held on the matter. The impressive topography formed through the rise of the Troodos Massif had a direct effect on the natural environment and also, directly or indirectly, every aspect of life and culture in Cyprus. The existence of the mountain range has given rise to a great variety of microclimates which, in conjunction with the various rock formations, have led to an interesting range of habitats in which a richly varied flora has developed comprising more than 140 endemic species, with most, over 90 in number, found in the Trodos mountain range. At elevations between 900 and 1400 meters, one comes across the cedar. This is one of the four species of cedar found throughout the world. It's encountered in abundance only in the Paphos forest, and particularly in the Tripilos area, which, like so many other parts of the Trodos mountains, lends itself to excellent walks. The Troodos Massif has a significant effect on climatological conditions and particularly rainfall. The tectonic activity which accompanied the formation of the mountains also caused the spallation of the rock formations themselves, rendering them permeable to water and resulting in the creation of aquifers and the emergence of natural springs at various elevations. Today, most of the rain falling on Troodos flows down its surface in rivers originating in the massif itself, irrigating fields, enriching coastal aquifers and filling the island's dams. The variety of terrains and microclimates formed by the rise of the Troodos Mountains is reflected in the large variety of crops and orchards. Vineyards as well as carob and olive trees have been a staple for the residents of the island from Neolithic times to this day. As regards fruit in particular, one need only travel a short distance to see subtropical varieties such as bananas, mango and avocado, as well as citrus fruit, replacing those of colder climates such as cherries, plums and apples. One of the epithets attributed by Homer to Cyprus was forest-clad. The 50-year life cycle of forests 
provided the large amounts of wood which helped keep alive the island's high in energy demand copper mining industry in antiquity. Copper mining continues to this day, albeit only at the Skuriodisa mine, probably the oldest and at the same time longest in operation copper mine in the world. Trodos is among the five richest in copper per unit surface areas in the world. On Trodos, we also come across the largest asbestos ore deposit in Europe, as well as deposits of excellent quality metallurgical and refractory chromite, all of which were highly exploited between 1924 and 1984. The Trodos rock formations constituted and still constitute the prime source of stone, that most ancient of building materials used extensively throughout the history of mankind. The wealth and diversity of Cyprus's architectural heritage is highlighted in all of the island's ancient and Byzantine monuments, as well as in all the traditional settlements bedecking both the Trodos Mountains themselves and the Cypriot countryside in general. The many villages of the Trodos Mountains are in complete and total harmony with the colorings, the geomorphology and the environment in general because they're built using construction materials obtained from the area around them. In every village, the buildings, the cobbled streets and the stonework reflect the geology and petrology of the region. The Trodos Mountains, there's still so much more one could say about them their contribution to Cypriot pottery. Their natural pigments, such as ochre, umbra, sienna and terra verde, used to embellish pottery and to adorn churches today included in the UNESCO World Heritage List and still in use by prominent hagiographers to this day. The long and complex geological processes in both Cyprus itself and the surrounding region created an island with a unique natural environment, an island of exceptional natural beauty, with richly varied landscapes and many unique features. Is it then pure happenstance that Greek mythology has Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty and fertility, rising from the foam of the sea in the area of Petra Turomiu, the very area where Earth scientists today place the collision and subduction of the African plate beneath Cyprus, a tectonic event which also constituted the primary driving force for the rise from beneath the waves of the island itself.